How are we going, YouTube? Uh, this one, tutorial, uh, basic wiring, tips, tricks, guides, that kind of stuff, you know, how to do stuff in dreams. This one's less of the sculpting or of to do stuff program side. So, what we're going to quickly do here is just get a uh, We're going to go that, we're going to go remote yeah, let's turn that off, turn that off, and then we're going to just grab <coughs> pass-throughs, as I call them, or nodes as the game program calls them. Let's just grab a couple of them. Okay, this is uh, purely so I can show some basic stuff, and we can wire it up. Um, just a little tip, when you look at the icon, here, like I'll close it, those little icons there, if you change these, so for example if I go, like this, they will change. So if you make them all a different icon, then that, that will change. But, there's our remote. There's our remote, so it's just a remote sensor. So when I press a button, the controller, so for example, if I grab that and grab, we'll go right trigger, put right, tr right trigger under that. Now when I hit right trigger, it obviously does that. So that's all that is. That's This isn't anything that's, uh, that. it's just so we can do stuff. <coughs> now let's grab this, we use this as the example and let's, uh, let's change that to that so I can see it <coughs> okay excuse me let's start with the very basics, uh, switch um, now there's multiple ways you can do it but my favourite way to do it is just grab yourself a selector and then go from input to output now obviously choose which one you want to be what, but let's say we'll go green for that one and red for that one. So as it sits right now, starts as on and goes to off. Now obviously if you want to change it, you just swap them over and then move that to there to there. Starts it off. The black mark at the top indicates where it is, so when it toggles it'll go down to B. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if it's only set at 2, it's an on or an off. So what we're going to do is grab Oops. Let's label this as Uh, that one. Okay. So that icon is square. Those other three are the the triangle, circle, and X. I'm not going to worry about them so much. We're going to use the square. So to toggle on and off this, we're going to go from the square to there, and then. As I showed before, we'll add some brightness to the thing just so you can see it light up. We'll go 15. Actually, uh, we'll get a little bit brighter. 25. That's a good amount of brightness. Now, if green is on, you got that. So, when it's at default, it's on off. So, it's red. So, right now, if we back out and we go to play mode, every time I press square, it toggles on and off. On and off, just by tapping square. So that that's a simple a simple toggle or a switch. So it's like a light switch, on or off. So A is whatever you want it to be uh, on by default, you go, that would be on. If you want off by default, that would be off. Because it will always start at A. Now if you want it to be obviously 
a toggle or a selector because it is technically a selector as you can see you can have it select multiple items so you could have it have a, like a dimmer an off a midpoint and an on so you could have it off faint on or um, walk jog run that kind of thing but just using it as an A and a B it's an on and an off that is probably the simplest way to do a, a like an a light switch or whatever now if you want to make it so it's a timed switch so you want it to switch on for a certain length of time all you have to do is add an extra little chip we'll grab this one so we want it to be that when we hit the button it will turn it on so we're gonna go like that instead of going to toggle between the two A and B A and B because that there will go to next so it's on A so going from next would go to B and then if you hit it again because it's only the two it would go back to A but we wanted to switch to B so it goes from off to on and then from there we're going to run it into a reset timer and have it only powered while it's on that <coughs> and depending on how long you want it to stay lit for or on for is what you'd set this timer here as so just so we want it for one second so there's one second so it will now when you press square it will switch to B which will then power this up and restart the timer and it will go for one second and then we're going to grab the uh, pulse from the our finish back to there uh, let's see if we so hitting the button will switch from A to B which will turn that on reset the timer go for one second when one second is up it will finish which will send a pulse through there which will send it back to A and because it's only powered while it's on B it will then obviously do it so as it stands right now when I press the power button it will turn on for one second and then switch back off again so if I go back to play, load, play mode tap on for one second switch is off on for one second switch is off if you want it for longer so you want it for three seconds just set it for three seconds going back in X R square it's on for three seconds then turns off tap one two three off so there you go there's, there's, there's the three seconds so <clears throat> if you're making for example a a motion sensor for example and you want it to stay on for a certain length of time or um, to play a certain sound for a certain length of time like going through a door and you want to go ding dong and the ding dong goes for I don't know, say a, a second you do it like this it'll play the sound for for whatever time you set that for it'll so when you walk through the sensor or you press the button it'll it'll do the thing for that length of time so that's the second chip now if you want it to be a we'll say like a, a flashing light and you don't want it to be that what you can do is instead of doing it this way just grab this timer and instead of having it pulse back to A have it pulse to next and then you can remove this and then the the timer here is how long between each switch so instead of using the controller to turn it on or off it is on automatically going to turn on then off then on then off at this interval so three seconds for this case so if I do it just as it is right now uh, with this one here set to on the end to reset right now this is going to go every three seconds it's going to finish and restart so every three seconds this is going to send it a pulse which it, it is now set to move to next input so every three seconds is going to go from A to B three seconds back to A so if I now go into it and go play mode with no input it will stay off for three seconds 
come on for three seconds. Then it'll go back off again for three seconds. Now obviously three seconds is way too slow for it. Just say you're making a <coughs> flashing light for a cop car and all that. So if you go 0.5 every half a second it will toggle. So and if I do it on off on off on off. So that's how you'd make a flashing light. Um, you could also from the pulse run to the power. So if I grab this and go to there, the difference with this is it was it's going to pulse on. Now the pulse is like 0.1 of a second. It's like super fast. It will do it every three seconds. So if I now play with that, you'll see it's more of a strobe light. So that's that. So let's put that back up to there. So I've showed you the standard st toggle, the times toggle, and the flash. Um, <clears throat> now if you want to make it so that it detects something, you got to grab yourself one of these. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Now this chip here, you can set it up Possess controller. So if I now grab a puppet, so if we grab just a basic one, uh, blank puppet, while this is open, the selection you have here, it will flash for anything it would detect. Excuse me. So as you can see, possess controller sensor the puppet is flashing. Therefore, that puppet is included in this. So, you've got to take note, there's the sensor there. So, yeah, it's flashing, but it's detecting from just in front of the puppet. So if you grab that circle, uh, let's grab it like this, like that. Now, if we move this this down, then open it, and then move that down. If that square there enters that sphere, then it will go yes, it has a detection, and it will send a signal out through here. That's how the detectors, uh, the trigger zones work. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it up like we had it before. Like this. Uh, let's rem remove that. <coughs> From B, we'll do that. Like that to there. Okay. So, what we want to do is run a signal from when it's detected. It will toggle to B for a certain length of time, which we set to we'll set to one second. It will then send us a, a signal which will send it back to A. Now, the, the catch with this is, if we stand in there, the signal will be permanently sent out. So B will be have a permanent signal. We don't want that. So we need to grab a, one of these, manipulator, and change manipulator into pulse, and just give it a pulse. Um, you don't have to be too precise with this. This is determining how how long the signal will be put out for. So when the signal comes in, this chip will now turn that into a, a permanent on to a pulse. So it'll go on for a second. In this case, on for 0.1 of a second. So we're going to run it through that and into the B. So when we enter the zone, it will pulse the signal, switching it to B, which will then turn this on, which will then uh, do whatever time you set this at, so one second, and it will send out a pulse to go back to A, which will turn it off. So when this puppet, or that square of this puppet, enters that zone, the floor will light up. So as you can see, oh, I can walk around, nothing will happen. But when I walk into the zone, if I can find it, there it is there, it will come on for one second. Even if I stay in the zone, it will come on for one second. If you wanted to stay on permanently when I'm in the area, that's even a more simple chip. All you do is come to the chip, 
we don't even need the selector. We can literally just grab this, run it straight to the light. So whenever this is triggered, it will be on. So now when we come into it, whenever we go into the zone, it will come on and stay on. As long as the character is within that zone, the light will stay on. When we leave the zone, it will turn off. So if you're doing a motion sensor, that's how you do it. Um, now if you want to also, let's just run this back into the pulse. If you want to give out a, a positioning guide, <clears throat> this one there's multiple ways you can do it as well. Uh, you can do it with either a text gadget. Let's grab a text ga gadget out. Or you could do it with... Uh, oops, wrong way, we want to go... So we have the fog, so as you can see, there's a big fog there, and we have a text gadget. Let's do the fog first, we'll turn the text gadget off. Now if you come to the fog, you'll see you get the green circle as well. So if we come roughly right there and we activate that, all you have to do with this is adjust this one to match this one. or we get this one to match this one. So they both have the little the little icon here which adjusts the shape. All you have to do is make sure they're the same. Now, two meters, two meters. So they're the same as it is right now. Then we come into here. Fog density, we can turn that down. It doesn't have to be in your face, it only has to be enough to give away a slight. So we come here. A slight light, and we'll give it a little bit of brightness just uh, that. So now, when we're going, you can just make out the haze whenever I get into it, it comes on. Now, that fog can be used for making a foggy ground, it can be used for making clouds in the sky, it could be used for making if your character smells have like the smell effect and stuff like that. Um, but I'm not going to show you all that, but we're going to turn that off now, and we're going to go, let's use the, the, the text gadget. Now, if you come into all these settings here, none of these are that important, it's mostly, I've used the number one, because the number one will always be displayed, whereas the text, if you turn text off it doesn't display it but we want to always do it on we want to go for a circle so let's go round round auto fit now if we open up this one now because this is inside the ch the, the text gadget is inside that that chip it will be centered on that chip if we choose to go to in scene so now if we get that Go inside, move it right smack bang in the center to there. We can then grab uh, oops, these until we get to about a circle. So as you can see, it's circle. Now if we click on face camera, it'll always look at the camera. So it is going to be centered on wherever we're looking. Now obviously that is not the same size, so we need to come in, grab that, scale it up, so it's around about right. Now I'm not going to go exact, but that's pretty damn close. Then we can go to here, to transparency, turn it down till it's just visible, so we'll say about a, we'll go a 10, turn off that, so as you can see there's a faint circle. So now if we go to play mode, Uh, why are you... Ah, got to turn it on. So now when I go into play mode, there's a faint circle. When I'm in that faint circle, it will flash on. Uh, 
Uh, the benefit of this version versus the, the fog is you can also click, let me come into here, you can also click on this one so that it is always on top. <coughs> so when I turn the camera to look at it, it will now overlay it over the top of the puppet. If there's a wall there, you'll see it through it. So that could be used as a or something like that. So that's how that works. Uh, let's turn that off. Let's turn the fog back on. I'll give you a quick show of... If you want to use it as ground fog, choose square. Then you can choose how wide it is. We can just widen that out. How high it is. Now obviously fogs, mm, we'll go, we'll say that, and got that. So we'll come down and see the fog, how high the fog is. Uh, move that down, so you get it to roughly the point you want. We'll go say about there. Let's turn the density up. Let's turn noise strength. Uh, that can stay as it is, that can stay there, that's all good. Um, mm, yeah, it's all good. Now if we go to play, you can see there's a, a fog layer on the ground. The denser you make it, the thicker it is. So if you come in here, density, turn that right up. There you go. More of that fog poking through. Um, for a cloud, I would have the density as high as you can get it have the noise strength up, but then turn the scale. If you go scale up, you can see that the, the gaps are a lot bigger. And if you turn, for example, that, we'll say uh, 25, and then move you up to a point where it's, say there, and go to play mode, you get the cloud look on the ground and then when you look up you can see clouds. Now to slow down the, the way it's changing all you do is adjust the noise speed you turn that down, now it's super slow. Turn it up, so if I play it, it's super fast. Super, uh, zero would be wouldn't move at all, one would be like super slow. So if you like that, it's moving but it's like super slow. So that's how you do a cloud. Okay. Okay. Now what other ones we got? Uh, the sun. Um, that's your skybox. Um, it now has this in it, so you can set it up to, for example, set time, uh, the pitch, the your. That's your skybox. If you want to have the background uh, a solid color, this one here, leave it as it is, but go to your sky box, which is the, the clouds. Now if you go down to your flex, so you've got your fog range, flex randomization, turn that down to zero, horizon to zero, and the intensity is how intense it will be, but if I come out to the side here, you can see like the sky is hard, you can hardly see there's a sky there. Now if I turn that tens intensity up, it goes to more like a white, and then if I change this colour, you can get basically a red background. The payoff is, is it's shrouding the whole scene in a red glow. If you want to change that, you've got to change the bright oops, uh, brightness down, which will give you the black background but it's no longer shrouding it in red. So, this, so that's where that isn't the best method for it, but it's the easiest. Give yourself a small amount of color, so say 10. If you go to play, we have a, a red background. Now obviously if you add a secondary one, you could use the two and mix them and have this 
the uh, sun itself be more intense than the background light and overpower the redness and you can do that but that's a basic way to get a solid background um, you could also wire it up to the timer daylight timer to get, actually I'll leave them to there to get those in there I'll turn that back on okay so that's that that's that, that I'm trying to think what else uh, cameras they're all sort of explanatory uh, gradient uh, effects this is if you want to add like uh, a cell shade look to it um, you can adjust the brightness you, this you could use in tandem with the skybox as well because uh, if for example you got red you can come into here and tell it to reduce the amount of red um, how bright the shadows are how bright the highlights are and how bright the midtones are if they've got a color to them um, vignette is shadowing of the edges so if you turn that off no shadowing on the edges if you turn that up as you can see shadowing of the edges um, bloom and lens flare bloom is if you're not if you don't know about it if for example you got a bright light that let's come in close the white parts you see that's the bloom so if you turn the bloom oops, turn the blooms up uh, there the white parts will become more intense you turn it down the white parts are less intense lens flare is like if there is a light source it causes a after effect on the actual lens none hundred percent um, so if you've got bloom and that you'll get more of a heavenly look to it um, let's turn them off uh, motion blur anyone who turns it on is a monster um, camera motion blur same thing if you want to see what it's like and why you're a monster um, there's your character camera motion blur is 100% whenever you move you get that whole ghosting thing if you turn this one on whenever the puppet moves so if I go to play any movement that character makes so moving the camera does nothing but as soon as you move your character it will cause motion blur and it's like only crazy people do that okay then we got uh, pinch or um, the other one that will squish or fish eye the, uh, the view. So if you go in that way, it will pinch it. Go that way, it will the opposite. It it's if you're gonna make an old style, like, wanna make it look like a CRT, you'd give it say 15% of that, and you go, ooh, I'm looking in an old monitor. Um, that is so you can cancel out certain colours. And that there is so you can add things like uh, apparition, uh, uh, what do they call that? Um, they call it glitch effect, but it's a um, like a, a actually that's chromatic apparition, isn't it? Yeah, that's what's that what's that one then? Oh, okay, that's actually glitch. And then that one there is polarize, which is what you'd use to make toon, cartoon, manga, so stuff. Uh, this one here is scan lines, so we want to make it look like an on monitor. You turn that one up, you get scan lines. And this one here is the resolution. So if you want to make it look like an old game, you can. Um, again, people who do this are monsters, like why would you do that on purpose? But if you're trying to make a retro looking game, you could go in the middle somewhere. When you get play mode. Oh look, it's an old PlayStation 1 game. And again, coming in, uh, L1, square, you can turn them on and off. You can turn the cloud off if you want. Uh, let's go into here, turn that to there, so it's not on top of everything. Okay, then we've got... Now again, the ruler, it's literally a, a guide thing. It's not visible in the actual scene. It's more for if you're making something based on something in real life. A door. Oh, 
an average door is around about the seven foot so it's we'll say oh that's that's two meters high so you know okay that's a two meter gaps but if you're in play mode you don't see it so it's like okay there's nothing here but obviously there's a guy there so if I'm making something I can use that and go okay if I put something at the top point here that's two meters above the ground that's what that's used for um, connectors I think I've done a half decent description on them um, I'm not going to be bringing that because that's a little bit more advanced stuff. Um, I think I quickly touched on emitters and, and uh, force suppliers. Um, force suppliers can be used to make like wind, um, all sorts of stuff. So if you get, for example, the entire map, and uh, we get force is a push. Of course, the wind blows, and we're not going to go radial, we're going to go directional, wherever the arrow is pointing. So, if we go like that, the wind is now blowing in that direction. Um, and obviously, uh, the speed of it and how much things. So, if we go max at five, five meters per second, when you go down, we're getting pushed backwards and we can't push against it. Um, if we turn that down to 50% as it starts, it's half the strength as it was. Uh, rewind. There we go. So if we go, you can see it's ever slightly pushing again. It's hard to walk that way. Easy to walk that way. Because we're walking into the wind. So that's how you could do a wind system. Um, storms. Uh, link that with a sound effect of wind. And rain, and you can make it. Oh, you're in a storm. You're gonna try and push through it. If you get 25, you get play. You can relatively easily get through it. Uh, rewind. Okay, let's get rid of that. Um, let's get rid of that. Okay. Um, teleporter that works it's a little on the confusing side because the way it should be isn't the way it is it's opposite if that makes any sort of sense um, you could use the teleporter to teleport an item and then that item goes to a tag so when you open this up, you can see that it uh, that enter the tag name. So whatever you name the tag. So if we go uh, T P, and if we tap up and down, we'll see it goes through all the different tags. There's T P. Now you would think logically that the the tag uh, the, the the tag here would go into the puppet, and the teleporter would teleport the the tag to itself, but as an actual fact it's the other way around that <clears throat> the teleporter teleports itself to the tag. So if I now grab for example where are we? Uh, grab square I run it to there. When I now hit square it should teleport me to the tag of TP. So if I go into here Move around, push square, thunk, straight to that spot. So if you need to make a... Uh, you go into a door and you need to teleport to a different scene or different location, you can have the thing, hit the button, and it takes you straight to that spot. Now obviously you can have it... If you come into the teleporter, you can have it match its position and match its orientation. And you can also tell it like what order it's to do it in, uh, whether whether it's in a certain area and what 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 things are. Play with them. It's easy. It's easy enough to figure out. The hardest part is to remember that the teleporter goes in your your um, puppet, or the item you're teleporting, and the the tag goes to where you would teleport to. So if you add, for example, another one. 
uh, grab the clone for now and we'll change this one uh, we need another tag so if I grab a tag and I will put it up in the air somewhere let's label this as high change this one to high and then we'll run it from we'll say triangle powers that one so I can now if I press square I go to there if I push triangle I go to there so you can teleport to multiple places so long as you have them labeled separately and that's why the teleport order things there so you can tell it that it's the first teleport is always going to be here second one is always going to be there or something along those lines uh, okay so that's teleporter <coughs> Um, I might as well quickly run through the uh, receivers and transmitters because they are super handy in certain situations. So if I wanted to make, for example, uh, something that like this one, but I don't want to use a second one of these. What I can do is, for example, this, this one here, if I want to run a transmitter, and a receiver. Now obviously these are in the same the same puppet so it's not like I'm gonna have to send the signal across the map or anything like that. So it's it's less less can go wrong with it, but the method is still the same. If I want to for example have uh, this one activate on we'll say right trigger. I can go right trigger to here. So this one here is right trigger, so if I go uh, T or as PlayStation people know it, uh, R2. And this one here is the receiver, so I can go in here. And all you do is cycle through till you find the same name as what this chip is called. And then you turn that to in the entire scene. I can actually, right now, I can use that and I can have it set to nothing because they're both in the same location. But if you're doing it like across the map, you do that. So it doesn't matter where on the map the receiver is, it is looking over the entire map to see, look for that. So anything that's labeled that, it will find and see if it's got an output. So then I can then run that to there. So without a cable going from directly from here to there, I now have a cable going to this and then it's sending a, a wireless signal to this one to power whatever comes out the back. So when I go into play mode, when I hit the trigger, look, I teleport. So that is how the transmitter and receiver works. And again, um, these two here can be in a completely different chip. So if I bring these over here, Uh, right now, this teleporter is, is inside that. So hitting right trigger is going to send the signal to the, this receiver and teleport this icon, this little chip here, to that tag. So it's going to move this chip to that location. So if I go right trigger and then square, it's going to teleport me to that location. So if I go into here. As you can see, I'm there, lights it up, does the one second, leave the circle here, right trigger, look. It the chip is now up there. And then it's back down here. Okay. Actually, why is Wait, is it not actually staying? No, it's still moving me up there. Why? Hmm, whatever. 
Apparently, because I placed it in there first, it's still moving like that. Hm. I'll ignore it. I'll ignore it. Okay. Uh, signal generator. That you can use to make a light source. So if you go for this example. And then we grab that. Let's remove... Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to run it into uh, the hue cycle. Let's turn that right up. And then do that. So it's permanently on. It's going to send a signal of that pattern. Up, down, up, down. I'm going to adjust it all and all that. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, but it's going to send a, a signal of on, off, on, off with a a gradual on, off, on, off, not, not a pulse. Um, and it's in the color, so it will gradually go full color back, full color back. So if you come in, the ground will, as you can see, it's changing colors. If you want to make it slower, just turn down the oop, here. You can f offset uh, sweep seconds. So if you turn that up it will slow down how it would think. So if you go to 10, it would now take 10 seconds to go from zero power to full power. So if you now go play, you can see that the color change is so much slower now. Okay, so we we'll get rid of that one. What else have we got? Uh, grab sensor. Now, that's a, a semi-redundant um, item, but for example, if I choose like this hand, if I zoom into it, select it. If we come down to that one, we can go grab. So when I go to play mode now, if it's not possessed, I've come to the hand, so that's the little antenna bit is flashing, that means it's interactable. Um, so it's grabbable. So if I come into here and we'll make this puppet, yeah, we're uh, oops, wrong one. This one, not possessable. Go to play. I can grab its hand. If you don't want it to be generalized, you can use uh, rewind. You can use we'll go collidable the grab sensor, so if we go into here and go that one, your grab function will work exactly on this spot. So if you need it to be at an exact spot, uh, can you stop with that please? Thank you. So you go to it, make sure it's in the hand, we'll choose the exact spot, we got that, imp stretch, um, hovered, grabbed and uh, grabbed it. So if you go, for example, if you want the hand to light up when you hover over it, you can come into the hand, for example, go to the hovered icon, uh, set that to, we'll choose a number, say 21, and got that. So whenever I hover to grab over that, it will then light up. And if I go grabbed, I can say, we'll change this color to that, or that. So if I now come into it, lights up, when I grab it, it'll change, uh, not let me, no, why not? Ah, because I un uncheck that, duh. In one more, there we go, that's still going to be on grab. There we go, so when I grab, I grab it. It does the whole change color, hover over it, lights up. Uh, that's pretty much what the grab sensor does. Um, what else have we got in here? Sensor I've showed, movements I'm not going to worry about, all this I'm not going to worry about. Laser scope, you can see you can determine distances, impact sensor. Um, that's if you've got the VR, uh, that's, a, that's a switch. It's literally a switch that you can place, and for example, if you want to make it between a possessable and not possessable, you can literally come into here, 
come in, we'll grab a keyframe, uh, make it go like that. So when that is powered on, makes the pup possessable. Now if we go to there, to there, so when that is turned on, the puppets can be possessed. So right now, if I go in, I can possess the puppet. But if I don't want to possess, be able to possess the puppet, I'm going to go like that. I can no longer possess the puppet. So that's what, that's what the switch does. Um, you could also use that to make, like I showed with the first one, with the switch there. You can use the same thing with that, but it's like a lot more chips are needed than just going that. It's, you don't even need that one and that one and that one. You can literally just watch straight through, but I always use these to give myself the guides of what I've wired it up to. At a glance, you can look at the red, green, off, on. It's, like, it's a no-brainer. Uh, we've got keyframes. There's the animation. I've showed all that before. That's all your sculpting. I've showed that before. Uh, that's your, your grids and your guides. If you do that one, it turns on the floor guide. Uh, studio lights. Uh, precise move. Uh, stay upright. So if you want something to stay exactly vertical, you turn that one on. Uh, grid snap. So uh, snaps to the grid. Uh, uh, show and hides. If that's, that one there's on, everything's shown. If that one's off, if you zoom in by one, whatever you're not, whatever you're not looking at. So if I come into there, for example, you can see everything. Can only see that. Uh, uh, that hides chips. Uh, that shows the rulers. I've deleted the ruler so you can't see it. That shows the areas. That shows any of the um, uh, joints. So like pivots, ball joints, that sort of stuff. They're inside the structure, so you need to do the x-ray as well to see through it. Uh, that turns on the thermals, so you can see what each one's done. Uh, that one turns on and off the wiring, so all these lines you can see, you can hide them all, or see them all. Um, that one turns on the paints, there's no paints, so it's not hiding any. That does the coat and effects. So for example, if you've got this and you've painted on uh, a pattern on it and stuff like that. It's kind of uh, where are we? There. Oop, another one. That one. It kind of changes the view of that. Uh, and that one's the hover effect. So when you're hovering over, you get the white line outline. Turn that off. You will no longer get the white outline. And that one there is for people colorblind. So you can turn on the different versions. So if you're colorblind, you can see the different things. Um, more utilities are always good, I suppose. Um, that plays a preview. That rewinds a preview, but uh, short keys, uh, R3, does that. And you do it again, undoes that. Uh, what else have we got? Tools, your tools, clone, uh, tweak, which literally just brings up the tweak options. And the shortcut is hover over it, uh, L1, Oop, L1 and square. That's the same thing. Uh, what else have we got? Um, that can freeze things. That is your detailing. Um, the higher the detail, the redder it is. The lower the detail, the bluer it is. Now obviously, uh, the lower the detail, the easier you see the flex. You decide, uh, if everything is low detail like this, you you will run smoother. Uh, that can mirror and unmirror the puppet. So as, the, as with mirror on, whatever you do to one side, it does to the other side. If you turn, if you turn the mirror off, it doesn't mirror. Uh, why are you still mirroring? Uh, let's grab that, let's grab that, let's grab that. Why are you still mirroring? Okay, so that's... Uh, 
Okay, I don't know why that's not working. Uh, hide everything else, obviously hides everything else. Shared all that. Shared all that. Uh, sound is a different thing altogether. Cameras, shared most of that. Add light sources, you can put a spotlight in. Do that. Turn it down because it's always too bright to start with. So you can add spotlights, whatever. You can come into here and change it to a global light. Um, cameras are the same. By default, the camera has the, the field cone. If your puppet's within that field cone, it should activate the camera. So if I get this and turn it just say that way, if I walk my puppet forward into the field of view, it should then. Uh, so let me because my ca uh, puppet's. Uh, hang on. If I auto possess this. Oh. There, there, and here, there, uh, force possession, you'll automatically possess the puppet. So, walking around, I'm fine. When I walk in front of where the camera is, it, will, it should automatically go to that camera. I can't remember where I placed the camera now. Um, you could also do the same with the activation. Uh, so when this camera, when you're inside this area, you can go camera. When that is there. Turns that camera on. Uh, we'll go like that. So I'm not on it when I step into it. It powers up the camera. Oh, the camera's attached to the puppet. That is why I couldn't find it. Uh, so if I come in, remove this from the puppet and put it in the globe in the world. There we go. So we walk into it. It goes to that camera. Walk out of it. Thingy. So that's how it works. Again, so now that I've got that in the correct layer. If I do that and do that, not in front of the camera, got my own camera, I've walked into front of where the camera will be, it'll automatically go to that camera. Um, to disable that, you have to go into the camera, have it off by default. And then obviously if you want it through there, go like that. Now that camera is not facing that point, so when you go into it, it looks off into the distance. Now I think that's most of the basic stuff. Um, bank, baked emitted, I don't even know why they added that. Uh, freeze, I think I've shown that before, if you freeze something like that, <coughs> you can't accidentally select it, because it goes, no, it's frozen. Um, the hides, you can click on stuff to hide the thing, so now that will be hidden, now it won't be hidden. Um, delete, obviously, it just literally just deletes the item. Um, but if you hover over it, pushing triangle does the exact same thing. Uh, clone clones, uh, stretch gives you the thing, so when you're on something, you can use stretch, change its shape. Um, if you don't have that, it literally just moves the item, it doesn't stretch it. Um, there's your redo and undos, but you can use the short keys for that as well. Loosen and tighten, changes the loosen and tighten, so you can loosen and tighten it. Uh, uh, these are cutting holes, so that is removing everything except for that shape and that one removes it's supposed to be doing a cutout so as you can see two different shapes it's got the little groove in it if you do the other one it's actually just that shape uh, self-explanatory, yep, 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 there's your shapes, 
Uh, that one there's your choose a shape. So if you want to make a um, bench shape, you can do like that. Make your bench shape. You can obviously do like your place, move place. Um, if you're on the stamp, you get the the blend. So when they're near each other, they will blend to each other. If you're not on the stamp, you will get the um, that option will be missing. So if you, uh, if you choose, for example, that one, that one, smear, stamp. If you're on that one, and then you try and do the blend, it's not there. You have to you have to be on that one. You have to be on. stamp not the smear because if you're on stamp you can actually go there bring it up and you have the blend so you're there and then you can see there's the blend well um I've pretty much done all the basics um, after effects does after effects so you can add yeah you know, boil that sort of shit to it if it's high detail you're not going to notice that much if you apply you're not going to see it because the detail is that fine, but you can see it moving. Uh, to fix that, the way uh, back out, go to the paint or style mode. Uh, we go to we'll change the flex to dots, and we're going to loosen it up. And now you can obviously see it better. So I might call it there. Um, so I hope one of these uh, explanations helped. Um, the only real thing you to remember is the teleporter is the bit that moves, not the the chip. I for for so long when I was doing it, I was always placing the chip in the puppet, going, "Oh yeah, it, it's going to teleport the chip to the teleport." No, it's the teleporter moves to the chip. Um, So, I hope one of these helps anyone who gets sort of stuck. Um, I'm not big on this side of it, so I can't go for the full advanced stuff. Because I'll get to a point where it's like, I cannot tell you what I'm doing. Um, I'm, I'm testing it as I go. But this basic stuff, I've been playing it long enough, I, can, I, I know enough about the basic stuff. So I thought I'd share what I know about the basic stuff. Um, so things like rigging a car to say make a noise when it moves that I can do no worries making the suspension move in a realistic way without having it be an actual physical thing that's where my limits are like um, I could probably sit there and figure it out but more than likely, I'll get frustrated and annoyed because it's not as simple as putting a wheel down and adding a spring. So the way I would do it, before I call it, the way I would do it is get, say, a cylinder. Let's place a cylinder like this. There's my tyre. Let's grab a square. There's my car. Okay, just for clarity, I'm going to make that more tire shaped. There we go, like that. The way I would want to do it is go, there's the tire, there's that. So that is the car, that is the tire. Come into here, that is got to go into that. Grab a connector, grab a, say, a piston or a slider. We'll grab a piston. Actually, now a slider. Got that, got that. Uh, this on. See, and the way I would think of doing it is like that. But the second you go to play mode and you try and move this around, it, it does kind of work. Um, if I move that around, 
and lift it up you can see like it, do, it does kind of work but how do you get that to stay at the correct height and look correct it's, that's where I have to fit, start figuring out so yeah so that's where my limits are so mid-range moderate um, they do have tutorials in the game that you can do but most of them don't do like if you want to do this it's more like if you want to make a platformer this is how you make a platformer um, but if you want to make yourself a car uh, there are quite a few good creators out there my suggestion is if you're stuck download their creation have a look at how they've done it and if you still get stuck throw them a message give them a comment say look um, I'm trying to make my own version of it can you give me any tips that is my that is my suggestion um, if you find any of my creations and you want to know like how I've done it throw me a comment or jump on the PlayStation messaging and go dude I downloaded this I see how you've done it kinda but how did you do it um, generally speaking I'll reply going this is how I've done it if you need a hand let me know this is my tips this, this is what I, how I figured it out and stuff like that um, so if I get that and go that Go to play mode. Locks them inside the circle still. So there he's going. Um, hope it helps. Stay safe, and I'll catch you all next time. I'm out of here.